Nation, what's happening? We're hey, back what's again here with Pastor Star, Pastor Dubs, Curcio, Pastor Moda, uh, whatever you want to call it, it's all good. So we're in the, in the throes of this uh, series called Doubt It. And we've been having a lot of Doubt It jokes here and there, which have probably been extremely corny. But the idea is this. We're glad that you've been tracking with us. This is week three. The first week we talked about how uh, you're not alone in your questions. We have these questions and, and you're not the only person who has them. And then last week we established that God does not shame us with our questions, right? Or when we continue going back with him, or oh, back to him with the same question. Well, this week we're going to talk about the fact that our questions don't always get answered. Not popular. But it's going to be a very interesting <laughs> conversation we're going to have. So, uh, Nate, right. you mind praying for us? Absolutely. If you guys want to bow your heads. Lord, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for this opportunity to talk together about something that most likely all of us have struggled with. Mm-hmm. And that's um, the questions we have of you. And we just want to ask that you would send your spirit to be with us as we discuss this now in your name. Amen. 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 So, so, so get this. When I think about someone's questions not being answered in the Bible, one of the first people that comes to my mind is Job. Job. And um, the, the Bible Project did a really good job of, of summarizing the book for you. Uh, I encourage you to go ahead and check it out. Find where, where you can uh, watch it so you can hear it and, and kind of ponder on this concept of not having your questions answered. But here's a man who had everything going for him, had a big family. Uh, in those times, that was a big thing. Big family. Wealthy, Property, yeah. friends, yeah. all this stuff. And all of a sudden, only because of Satan want, being Satan, all of this gets taken away. Yeah. The only thing that doesn't get taken away is his wife and his health. Yeah. And he had a lot of questions. <laughs> I mean, yeah. there were a ton yeah. of questions. And even his friends had questions. There was a, there was a lot of that going on. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, you know, it just seems like he just never got the answers to those questions. Now, I'm really summarizing because of time, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. So Cliff Notes, take the time to go ahead and read the book. Um, but it's but intense, right? It because, is extremely intense. I mean, the whole book, we, I just read, I, I know you're going through the same Bible reading pr- we are. plan I am, so we just read through this recently, and you, you're tracking through this. It's mm-hmm. just like a chapter maybe bleeds into the second chapter. I don't even think so of like what happens, like all this Mm -hmm. bad stuff happens. And then it's just chapter after chapter after chapter of Job looking for an answer of what's going on. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's really the quest of it. It's not just that his life is fixed. Mm -hmm. That's not really what he's asking for like the Mm -hmm. 40-some chapters of this book. He's not saying, God, fix it. He's saying, what in the world is going on? Correct. And so like most of this book is just so painful Mm -hmm. as his friends who, in my opinion, are friends. I mean, they're... They start getting a little mm-hmm. um, self-righteous at the end of it. But it's like they're trying. They're clearly, they appear to be God followers. They're there with him. Yeah, yeah, they're with him in the midst of it. And they even sit with him for a long time and don't say anything. So I feel like we always slam his the friends right. of Job. And it's like they're doing a lot of things right. It's just the problem is, is they have like these half-truths about God. Mm-hmm. Like they'll, they'll have something that's right about God, but then they'll, they'll continually apply it, misapply it to his situation. So Job is just there constantly... I mean, that's the plight of his of this whole book is he's mm-hmm. looking for an answer. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And, and this is what gets me. And I'm, I'm yeah, going right. to read Jeff. Yeah. You, you can take it from here. He gets restored when this is all said oh, yeah. and done. Yeah. Like he has children again. He has double the wealth that he mm-hmm. had. Uh, you'd assume his wife never left him. You know, yeah. at least we don't have any evidence of that. So, so the concept is he gets restored, but it still feels like his questions were not well, answered. Well, that's what I was going to say. God, in, when you read those, those chapters when God does respond, I love how much he says. With saying nothing, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> pertaining to pertaining to Job and what yeah. he, why his current like going like mm-hmm. where were you when this was formed or can you hold this these stars in your hands or can you do this where were you, you were at creation oh no he's almost sarcastic and I I yeah. love that about God. there's like these slew of <laughs> yeah. questions yeah. right that yeah. God has he throws back at him yeah, yeah basically instead of getting more answers he really just gets more questions mm-hmm. where God is kind of lovingly I think puts him in his place but ultimately. At the end of Job, I mean, if you guys haven't read it, we encourage you to read it. It's, yeah, it's, so. it's neat. If you don't want to read all the in-between questioning, that's fine. Just skip to, is it like chapter 38 or 39? It's near the end, Just yeah. when it says God responds. And, mm-hmm. and God responds mm-hmm. for a few chapters. And he goes through. Like, did you tell it when, you know, the, the, the ocean to come this far and then to stop? And it's just like all of these questions basically saying, Job, are you God? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And Job's yeah, basically. answer is he nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so what's crazy about this, though, is he actually has the opportunity to have an encounter with God where he's talking with God. And most of us 
don't experience mm-hmm. this type of communication mm-hmm. with God where we, I mean, we connect with God for sure. And we feel like he touches our hearts through the Holy Spirit. But like Job is actually communicating mm-hmm. verbally with God. And at the end of it, it it's done. And he doesn't have an answer. Yeah. And yet yeah. what's, in your guys' opinion, like what's changed? Because God does come and he, he works in his life or, mm-hmm. or whatever. But like, what do you think happens? Because like, again, something bad happens. Job questions for and looks for answers for some 30 some chapters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God does show up but doesn't answer him. And yet Job then moves on apparently well after that. What happens? Well, I think, I don't know. This is how I I deal with Job's uh, problems, I guess. Like I've talked to some some people that have a really hard time with Job because like, why would God do this or allow this? And for me, it boils down to that Job had to look forward to heaven. Like even the restoration that happens, we talked at at College Hill Academy Chapel uh, a few weeks ago and, and talked about how <clears throat> that restoration wasn't complete. Mm-hmm. Like if if I lost my kids, and God gave me eight more, mm-hmm. my restoration wouldn't be complete. Like it yeah. still wouldn't. Like right. okay, I, I got kids. That's awesome, and I love these new these these kids that now I have. But I, it still yeah. doesn't restore that. So I think Job, like a light bulb went off in his head, and I think we can do the same thing. Like we won't be fully restored here. We won't have those questions answered here. I think we'll understand and have some of those questions answered in heaven. And so I think Job had to just say looking for the future. And that's what actually Hebrews 11 talks about mm-hmm. with the men of men and women of faith. And it talks about how they actually didn't get everything God promised. They got it. They're going to get it in heaven. And there's yes. also Romans 8 has a powerful verse about this. Correct. Romans 8, 28. And, and we know this. And we know it in different uh, sometimes versions. So mm-hmm. I'm just going to read it from the NIV so that way it's concise. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose that's a super strong text but it, it's one of those things that you have to accept by faith and by the way all of us have been called guys sometimes we, we read that like oh maybe i'm not called maybe i'm no every single person has been called right so if we respond to that call that's what this is talking about that everything works together for good in, in heaven yeah well and that's and that's what we're getting at here on this earth we can't avoid the pain here in this earth we can't avoid the challenges we can't really avoid the doubt and this is why we're talking about this <laughs> um but we have to hold on to this. And it's not a blind faith. I mean, God has come through for you. Just think about uh, those times when he has. And then know that it's all going to work out for good. You may not see the result of that good or, 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 mm-hmm. or the fulfillment of this particular text here on earth. Like, like Jeff said earlier, you may see it when you get to heaven. But if that's where you go, then it's going to be worth it. Mm-hmm. Because we're going to be in a place where we're, we're going to be in eternal bliss. We don't have to deal with any of the challenges. And like we mentioned over there at, at CA, you know, COVID has taken a lot from us. Mm-hmm. Truly, sin has has caused us to suffer a whole lot of loss. Mm-hmm. And what God is wanting to do is restore us. And he, if he's allowing us to go through it, and he's allowing us to work through these doubts, is because he's preparing us for his kingdom. Mm-hmm. And it's going to work out for good in the end if the result or the outcome is we live eternally with him. Yep. So don't be mad when you, your questions don't get answered. No. But look to heaven. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Go to God with your questions. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the most mm-hmm. beautiful points of the story is that regardless of whether he got an answer or not, just being in the presence of God was apparently enough for him. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. When God did show up, he didn't need to bring an answer. He just needed to bring himself. Mm-hmm. And so while God went, may not, it's po- oftentimes he does, but he may not bring you an answer to your questions, just even being in his presence is often enough for us to uh, continue to move on. In yep. faith. Right. Yep. So even even though, guys, and this is this is the idea, even though we don't receive the answers to our questions, we can still trust in our Redeemer. Mm-hmm. And that's what we want you to take. Yep. All right. So I'm going to ask Jeff to, to pray over you before yep. we wrap it up. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to look to heaven, you and your throne. And help us to ask those questions, even whether we get an answer or not, just to have that communication happen and to have your presence be in our life. Lord, help us to to step out in faith and to walk with you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, thanks for joining us, guys. See you next week. See ya. Blessings.